We're here today talking to Greg Jamison from Jamison Fisher, Solicitors and Accountants. Hi Greg. Hey Brian. Well today's subject is about settlement and probably just after settlement. What happens if the vendor takes some of the fixtures and fittings or even the plants or changes the dishwasher to not what it was? What can the purchaser do? It's a perennial problem, Brian, and unfortunately the poor old agent is the one who gets lumbered with the problem. All the time. What really needs to happen here is that agents need to let the vendors know that the property, once it exchange, that is the condition the property must be in at settlement, okay? And clearly set out with them what is attached in the contract as fixtures and fittings, what is being left, and that they have to remain in that same condition. Um, one of the things, you know, obviously the, the common things are things like dishwashers and stoves and, and uh, dryers, and they need to be clearly identified as to whether they're staying or not, whether they're exclusions or inclusions. Um, the old rule with fixtures and fittings is essentially anything that requires a tool to remove it would make it a fixture. So if you wanted to dig up the rose garden and take all of those roses out of the garden bed, they're fixtures. But if they're in a pot and easily movable, then they're not. Again, prior to completion, the agent needs to organise for the, prospect for the purchaser to actually make an inspection of the property to ensure that the property is in the same condition as when they exchange contracts and that all of those fixtures and fittings are still there and in workable order. What then happens is if certain things have been removed, then that's a position then for the solicitors, particularly the purchaser solicitor, to say, well, I'm holding back funds at settlement until either this damage is rectified or we are compensated for the loss of the rose garden or for the removal of the brand new dishwasher and replacement with an old dishwasher. Those have to be done prior to completion. Well, what happens if it has settled and they did the inspection beforehand, the final inspection, but when they came back after settlement, something had gone? Okay, this is where it becomes complicated because then it becomes a contractual dispute and quite often the cost of trying to pursue a $400 piece of equipment far exceeds the value and the cost of the litigation. So again, what we really need to do here is the purchaser needs to do the inspection as soon as practicable before completion. So if completion is at midday that day, they should be doing the inspection that morning, not after completion has already occurred. In these instances where things like that happen, in the past, I think the best way I've seen these remedies, quite often the agent puts his hand in his pocket, uh, rectifies the problem, and what it happens there is they keep the purchaser on site as a potential future client. Easy for me to say because it's the agent's money, but I mean, from a practical point of view, it is sometimes a lot cheaper to do that than let the purchaser get into some litigated dispute with the vendor, because at the end of the day, it will always be the agent's fault regardless. Well, thank you, Greg. Uh, um, I'm not like the idea, of the idea of the agent having to spend money, but I can see the practical solution to that. Thank you for that advice. Thanks, Brian.